This next page is all about factoring, so start with 29. 29 is a good reminder that no matter what you might want to try, you should always look for a GCF first. The 45A squared minus 20B squared, both of those have a common factor of 5, so we should begin by factoring a 5 out. That will give us a 9A squared minus 4B squared. So far so good. We did do a GCF, so it is partly factored. Whenever they say factor, though, what they really mean is to factor completely. So if you can break it down more, you always have to. After we pull the 5 out, we see that the parenthesis, the quantity in the parentheses is a difference of squares. It's going to be a 3a and a 3a, a 2b and a 2b, 1 plus and 1 minus. Okay. So that's our answer to 29. In question 30, this is a trinomial. We have one, two, three terms. Can you should look for a GCF if there is one, but there is not. Because the leading coefficient is one here, this is going to be one of the easier types, where it's going to be just the factors of the last term that need to make the factor in the middle term of 10. If you look at all of the factors of positive 9, you could have a 1 and a 9, a 3 and a 3. We wouldn't need them for this one, but you also have a separate list. Other numbers that multiply to get positive 9 would be a negative 1 and negative 9, and a negative 3 and negative 3. But the combination that's going to add to 10 would be the 1 and the 9. 1 times 9 gives us 9, and 1 plus 9 gives us, gives us 10. So the way this is going to factor is we're going to have an a and an a, and our last term is going to be a positive 1b coming from this number here, and a positive 9b coming from that number there. So a plus b times a plus 9b. Again, if you're really unsure and you want to check this, you can do that. I'll just do this very quickly, just this once. If I distribute the a through, I would have a squared plus a times 9b would be a 9ab. If you distribute the b in, you get 1ab plus 9b squared. Combine your middle terms, you have 9a squared plus 10ab plus 9b squared, which is exactly what we were looking for. So we know that that factorization is correct. Let's take a look at 31. In order to factor this one, the first thing we want to do is factor out the negative 1 from that leading coefficient. It'll make this work a little bit easier. By factoring out the negative 1, that's going to change all of the signs. We now have a, a trinomial where the leading coefficient is 1. So we can look entirely at the factors of the last number. The factors of 20 would be 1 and 20. 2 and 10, or 4 and 5, and we'd have a complete another list where both of these would be negative, because you could also have a negative 1 times negative 20 to get 20, or a negative 2 and a negative 10, or a negative 4 and a, a negative 5. The combination that's going to give us that negative 9 that we see here should be this possibility right here. Negative 4 times negative 5 will multiply to give you a positive 20, but it will add to give you a negative 9. So this is going to factor as an x with a minus 4 and an x with a minus 5. And don't forget, in the very beginning, we pulled out that negative. That's still going to be there. Final answer. Let's take a look at number 32. Again, you should look for a GCF. Unfortunately, those three terms do not have a GCF. This is one of the more involved trinomials because the leading coefficient is no longer 1. So to do this, you want to do the AC method. The AC method says identify the number A and the number C. A would be 4, C would be 3. You multiply those together. 4 times 3 would give us 12. And then you proceed to write out all of the different factors of 12. They would be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. And we would also have the other possibilities where they both could be negative. 
what we then look to do is look at the combination of the factors of 12 that would add to give us the middle term of a positive 13, and that's going to be the positive 1 with the positive 12. 1 plus 12 gives us 13. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to split up that middle term according to those two numbers. So instead of calling it a 13y, I can call a 1y plus a 12y. Hasn't, haven't changed the value of the expression, but by splitting it apart, what we've done is we've given us a situation where we have four terms. And we know from before that whenever you have four terms, you can do a factor by grouping. I'm now going to choose to group the first two things together. I'm also going to group the last two things together. We do the GCF in each grouping. Out of the first grouping, I can pull out a Y. That'll leave me with a 4Y plus 1. Out of the second grouping, I can pull out a GCF of 3. That'll also be a 4Y plus 1. And it's looking good because we have a commonality of 4Y plus 1. So we can pull out that common factor. When I remove it from the first term, I'm left with just the Y. When I remove it from the second term, I'm left with the plus 3. So that would be our, our factorization. 4Y plus 1 times Y plus 3. Let's take a look at number 33. We have 12x squared minus 5x minus 2. It's another trinomial. There's no GCF to, to start with, so we're going to jump right into the AC method. A is 12. C is negative 2. So I'm going to do A times C. 12 times negative 2 would give us negative 24. And now we write out all of the factors of negative 24. They would be negative 1 and 24, negative 2 and 12, negative 3 and 8, or negative 4 and 6. It could also be the case that the negative is on the other factor. So I could have a 1 with a negative 24, a 2 with a negative 12, a 3 with a negative 8, or a 4 with a negative 6. And we need to pick the combination that's going to add to give us a number of negative 5. And it looks like it's going to be the 3 and the negative 8. 3 times negative 8 gives us negative 24. And 3 plus negative 8 would be equal to the, the negative 5. So we're again, we're going to split up this middle term. So we're going to rewrite the negative 5x as a positive 3x along with a negative 8x. So we have our 12x squared. This is getting split up according to the two numbers we just talked about. It's a positive 3 and a negative 8. That gives us four terms. We're going to factor by grouping. I group the first two together. I group the last two together. The GCF in the first grouping is a 3x. I pull that out and I get a 4x plus 1. Out of this grouping, there's a common factor of negative 2 we can pull out. That again leaves us with a 4x plus 1. That 4x plus 1 quantity is common to both, so we can factor it out. And that will leave us with a 3x minus 2. So final factorization, 4x plus 1 times 3x minus 2. Let's take a look at 34. This one, again, it's a trinomial. There's no GCF. You could try to go ahead and... Do the AC method, and it will work on this one. You also might notice that 9 and 4, the A and the C number, are perfect squares. So you might think along the lines of, well, maybe this is one of our perfect square trinomials, and you'd absolutely be right on this one. So if you notice that fact, you might be able to factor it a little more easily. This one will factor as 3x plus 2 times 3x plus 2. So again, either the AC method, or if you were did a very good job with the perfect square trinomials, that's how this one would factor. And because it's the same factor, we can even write it in exponential notation. That's the same thing as 3x plus 2 squared because you have the same repeated factor. So I'm not going to show the AC method on this one because I did it with the rest of them. Uh, but it's, again, it's a trinomial where a, with a non-one leading coefficient. So AC method always works. Okay. Take a look at number 35. We have yet another trinomial. 
Here, the leading coefficient is 1, so it should make it a little bit easier that the middle term should be entirely dictated by the factors of the last term. If you look at the factors of 5, they are 1 and 5, or negative 1 and negative 5. However, none of these factors will add to give us the positive 10 that we need, and what that tells us is that this one will not factor, and we called that prime. So 35 is actually prime, or if you just write out can't factor, that would also be correct. So 35 will not split apart. Let's take a look at number 36. Looks like there might be a GCF, but there's nothing other than one. We do have four terms, so we should try a factor by grouping. Let's group the first two terms. And we're going to group the last two terms. Out of the first grouping, you can pull out a y squared. That'll leave us with y minus 1. Out of the second parenthesis, you can factor out a 5. And in addition, because the first term is negative, you should factor out a negative 5. Oops, excuse me. This should have been y minus 3. Right, you pull a y squared out, you still have y with the minus 3 there. When we pull a negative 5 out of the second parenthesis, that'll leave us with a y minus 3 as well. And again, common factor here of y minus 3, you can pull that out, and that'll leave us with y squared minus 5. In question number 37, we have three terms. Notice that this time we do have a GCF of 2, so let's begin by factoring the 2 out. That'll give us 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. You should try to see if you can factor this trinomial more. I'm going to omit that step, but that would also be a AC method. If you do this, it'll factor as a 2x and an x. It'll be a 3 and a 1 and a plus and a, and a minus. The last one on this page is y cubed minus 8. This is a difference of cubes. Let me briefly review for you how a sum and difference of cubes factors. If you have, let's say, a cubed um, minus b cubed, the way that a difference of cubed factors is a binomial times a trinomial. So we have a two-term thing times a three-term thing. To get the binomial, you just want to ask the question, what's being cubed here? That's a. You keep the same sign. And then what's being cubed here is the b. That'll give you the binomial portion. You can use that to get the trinomial piece. The first term here is the first term in your binomial squared. That's going to be a squared. The last term here is the last term in the binomial squared. That's a plus b squared. And then for the middle term, you just simply multiply these two things together, but switch the sign. a times b is ab. If you see a minus sign, it becomes a plus. The same pattern would work for a sum of cubes. What we cube to get a cubed is a. You keep the same sign. What you would cube to get b cubed would be b. That gives me my binomial. I'm now going to get, use that to get the trinomial. First term here is the first term here squared. The last term here is the last term there squared. And then for the middle term, you multiply the two together, but switch the sign. Some people will use the acronym same opposite always positive, so the acronym is SOAP, and that'll kind of help you to get the signs correct. The sign in your binomial is the same as what you have here. The first sign in the trinomial is the opposite O of what you have there, and then the last term is always positive. So SOAP, same, opposite, always positive. If we try to factor Y cubed minus A cubed, that is a difference of cubes, so it's going to be a binomial times a trinomial. What we would cube to get y cubed would be y. Keep the same sign. 8 cubed is, uh, excuse me, what we cube to get a cubed would be 2. It's 2 to the third power to get 8, so that's going to be 2. First term here is the first term there squared, that's y squared. The last term here is the last term there squared, which is 4 squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4. And in the middle term is you multiply the y times 2, 
which would give us 2y, but switch the sign from what you see there. So final answer, y minus 2 times y squared plus 2y plus 4. It's also well known that when you factor a sum or difference of cubes, this resulting trinomial piece you get will never break down. So don't worry about having to, to try to do anything more to it. That piece will be prime and won't reduce any more than what you have right now.